Betrayal, the complete violation of a person's trust or confidence. To many of you, the word betray might send a flurry of memories your way. Memories you'd rather keep locked in the dark chamber of your mind. Maybe the memory where your friend from school watched the newest Annoying Orange episode without you. A vivid memory of someone joining your Minecraft Pocket Edition world during lunch and griefing everything you had, or maybe a memory of enjoying any YouTuber that became popular during the early 2010s. The N-word is just a word. To me though, the word betrayal comes with a much darker cost. A memory so abhorrent and vile that it would drive even the most normal individuals insane. A betrayal so disgusting that it sends shivers down my spine to this day and I simply can't avoid talking about it anymore. When I hear the word betray, only one thought comes to my mind. Behavior's mistreatment of one of horror's most iconic characters. The pain and agony that comes with how horribly mismanaged a licensed DVD killer was. A killer known as Freddy Krueger. Seriously, Freddy Krueger has been a persistent thorn in my side since he was released so many years ago. His treatment in the game is so confusing and annoying that he's been living in my head rent free for years. I mean, you just can't get this guy to stop talking about Freddy Krueger. From the moment I wake up in the morning to the second I go to sleep at night, I'm thinking about Freddy Krueger. The most offensive thing about Freddy Krueger isn't that he's an overpowered powerhouse like the nurse or Blade, and he isn't even offensively bad like some of the weaker killers in the game like my boy Trapper. I mean, he's close, but he's not quite there. Instead, the biggest problem with Kruger is that he's just so fucking boring. The irony of Freddy Krueger not only putting you to sleep in game, but real life too has to be intentional. I mean, you don't accidentally make a killer this boring, right? I'm running with the game theory that Dead by Daylight's interpretation of Freddy Krueger is a ploy by behavior as a way to put you to sleep so you forget about the fact that cross progression isn't in the game yet. Either way, Freddy is a killer that I've been underwhelmed by since release and I doubt that'll change soon. There's just nothing he offers to matches that spice up the gameplay in any way, making any other killer more appealing to go against. Well, with, with some exceptions, obviously. However, to fully understand my problems with Freddy, we have to go back to the very beginning. In October of 2016, the DBD community found themselves with something absolutely massive. And no, it wasn't just map size at the time. On the 25th of October, the Halloween chapter was released, adding Haddonfield, Laurie Strode, and of course, the King of Thirst fan art himself, Michael Myers. This shook up the community a ton, I mean, being able to play as Michael Myers was something no one had ever even considered possible. But there he stood. This revelation brought not only a ton of new people to the game, but also started the slew of fan-made chapters we still see in the DVD community today. People's minds were running rampant with characters they'd really want to see in the game, most of which actually ended up coming true. However, there was a certain set of characters that were more anticipated than others. You see, Michael Myers is a member of what I dub the Terror Trinity, and I know it's an awesome name, I'm keeping it. Anyone who uses it will have a cease and desist letter sent to their door. The Terror Trinity features three iconic horror characters that you all probably think of when you hear the word slasher. Myers, Jason, and Freddy. M not that one. There we go, that one. Now, depending on your taste, you can probably add another slot to these three and throw in another iconic character like Chucky or Leatherface, but I'd say that these three are the most recognizable. When people started coming up with their own chapter ideas, you end up seeing Jason and Freddy appearing a lot. Now, Jason was a character people really wanted and still want to see it in the game, but he just boils down to another generic slasher and a spot that the game has already filled from the Trapper, who was the first killer we ever got, who's heavily inspired by Jason's design. However, Freddy Krueger is where concepts got a bit wild. Freddy Krueger is not a generic slasher at all. I mean, yeah, he kills and mutilates people in a spectacularly gory fashion, but he has a lot more that divides him from the rest of the other characters that he's often grouped with. As you know, Michael Myers and Jason Voorhees pose a physical threat to their victims. No matter who you are or how buff you think you are, there's a 95% chance that one of these guys will overpower you. However, Freddy Krueger doesn't pose that physical threat. I mean, look at him, he's built like a Starbucks barista. Instead, Freddy Krueger offers a much scarier threat than Jason or Myers ever could. The scariest thing about Freddy is that he only exists to the people he wants to torment. Freddy is called the Dream Demon. 
Not because he makes shitty Minecraft videos that won't get out of my recommendations, but because Freddy has the ability to appear in people's dreams and manipulate them to his will. Kruger offers a whole new meaning to the word psychological horror, even if the way he operates is definitely more physical horror. He's an enemy you can't really escape from. You can run as far as you can, hide in the best spot known to mankind, but eventually you'll need to fall asleep. Freddy is inevitable. The power he possesses plays a big part in differentiating him from everyone else, and thanks to an iconic performance by Robert England, Freddy Krueger quickly became a horror icon, similar to Myers in his heyday. Thanks to this, when people started coming up with killer concepts, guess who started becoming one of the most popular? The potential that Freddy Krueger could have offered the game was insane. Not only would he be another horror icon to add to the roster, but his power could be adapted in the way the game had never seen. He could be a truly unique killer. What kinds of things could they do with this power? Maybe they could create a separate dream world that Freddy inhabits, or maybe they could give him the ability to manifest only when he wanted to. Or, hell, even give him the ability to delete loops from the game. There's a lot you could do with Freddy. Players' minds ran wild with the potential Kruger could have. Fortunately for them, they didn't have to wait very long to find out. Almost exactly one year after the release of the Halloween chapter, Nightmare on Elm Street made its debut, giving fans what they had been wanting for such a long time. The horror icon, Freddy Krueger. Who the fuck is that? Uh, that's... That's not Robert England. This skinwalker pretending to be Freddy isn't from the classic Nightmare on Elm Street movies, but instead the 2010 reboot of the first movie. So instead of getting cool Freddy Krueger who's campy and funny, we get gross Predator Freddy who has no personality besides being creepy and LARPing as Kevin Spacey. Ugh. I mean, it was always implied that Freddy was that sort of guy, but it wasn't as tasteless as the 2010 version made it out to be, as if something like that can even have taste to begin with. Either way, this is the version we got for some reason. Not entirely sure why. I did my research, I couldn't really find a direct explanation. I'm assuming maybe the 2010 version was cheaper to use, or maybe there's a licensing problem with the main version. Regardless, the version of Freddy we got made almost no difference in terms of the most important part of his design his gameplay. So, I guess we'll just have to deal with scary and gross Mandela catalog Freddy for who knows how long. When Freddy was released, the excitement of having another horror icon in the game was quickly replaced with an overwhelming feeling of disappointment, which was mainly for one reason. Freddy was dog shit. No joke, he made pre-buff Wraith look actually decent. You know, the wraith that got bullied relentlessly by survivors and was stomped almost every game. Yeah, Freddy was worse. For some of the newer Dead by Daylight players here, you probably don't remember about release or early Freddy, and hell, maybe some of the older players don't remember him because he was that bad and forgettable. For you guys, I'll give you a refresher. Freddy featured the ability to pull survivors into the dream world, which was a realm that he occupied the entire game. It was, and still is, whatever map you're playing on with everything in it except for the difference in sky, box, and lighting. As a survivor, if you were awake, you would only know Freddy was nearby if you heard a faint lullaby or saw some grass moving, and he couldn't hit you at all while you were awake. Once Fredward begins pulling you into the dream world, you'd have 7 seconds to run away before he could hit you and you'd see him intermittently during those seconds. So, you'd have seven seconds to get to a loop before Freddy could even interact with you. That is crazy. You're probably thinking, well, Freddy must have had some sort of chase power in the dream world to make up for not being able to hit people, right? <laughs> yeah, that, that makes sense, but no. Just no. He was just a basic M1 killer in the dream world, making it so he wasn't even a killer when survivors were awake and had no power when they were asleep. I'm sure you're starting to put two and two together. However, what made the dream world different from the regular world is that survivors faced a 50% reduction to most actions while asleep. For example, a gen would normally take 80 seconds to complete. By yourself, obviously. But when you were asleep, it would take 160 seconds, or almost three whole minutes the entire duration of Corrupt Intervention. So, while Freddy had basically no lethality, you were being punished solely for the fact that doing things in the dream world took longer. Yeah, he makes 3-gen Skull Merchant look like a curved hillbilly. 
Another big part of Freddy's pure, unfiltered, mind-numbing gameplay was that he could see survivors' auras almost non-stop while they were asleep, which just made him come across as even more boring because there was nothing he could do with that information. To add insult to injury, survivors could break themselves out of the dream world by failing a skill check, which was way easier to do when everyone and their mother was running self-care. Freddy's gameplay was almost non-existent. He had an incredibly numb and bare-bones power that didn't provide an effective way of chasing survivors. Other than Freddy's weird go-go gadget extendo lunge, and no, it's not actually longer than a regular lunge, it just looks really, really stupid for some reason. But what it did do was grind the game to a complete halt. Unless you were planning on artificially extending the game for the funsies, there was no real reason to pick Freddy, especially when you had powerhouses like Nurse or Hillbilly. As a result, Freddy quickly dropped to the bottom of everyone's tier list and stayed there for ages. Funny enough, despite the unanimous statement that Freddy was dog water by most of the community who was actually associated with the game, he never really recon recognized a buff? Why did I write that? He never really received a buff. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I must have been tired when I wrote this. In fact, they nerfed the poor guy over and over again. Sure, he received a couple of quality of life changes here and there, but they didn't really fix the problem or even make it a little better. For a long time, Freddy was the laughing stock of Dead by Daylight, and deservedly so. It felt like behavior made half a killer and was like, eh, that's good enough. He was embarrassingly bad from the start, and once behavior started nerfing him, the disappointment turned to outrage. If you're at all wondering why Behavior was like, hey, this is a really weak killer, let's nerf him. Freddy seemed overpowered to newer players because he could see their aura nonstop, and people started complaining on, on DBD forums and stuff like that and getting him nerfed, even though everybody else who actually played the game was like, dude, he is dog shit, he needs changes. And this is one of the many reasons people point to for Behavior being stat andies who like to nerf stuff that doesn't need nerf and buff stuff that's already strong because people just don't understand how to use it and the vast majority of the DBD community are newer players who don't really know how the game really works. And this is one of the biggest examples of that actually happening. In patch 3.1.0, a whole two years after Freddy's initial release, Behavior finally gave him the second look he desperately needed. Freddy met Death, but Death did not want him. His obsession with revenge will get the better of him. Only this time, the entity had other plans for him. Terrified and sleep deprived, survivors face Freddy's Freddy. power had been reworked almost from the top down to make him stronger and more threatening to experienced players. This is the version we see of Freddy today other than a few add-on changes here and there. It seemed like the main goal of this rework was to provide Freddy with some more map control and ways to end chases quicker. To achieve this, they gave Kruger the ability to teleport directly to any generators that were incomplete, and small dream snares, which slowed down survivors who stepped on them while in the dream world. While these changes definitely addressed a good amount of problems people had with Freddy, it didn't fix everything. Even though people were talking about Freddy being A tier after these changes, those statements didn't last very long. The rework may have helped Freddy lose the stigma of being irreversibly awful, but they didn't make him fun to go against. His ability to teleport to generators gave him a lot more map pressure, but it also made games against him feel repetitive and boring. Every time Freddy would hook someone, you'd instantly see him teleport to a generator and give it the old Pop Goes the Weasel treatment, which got old very fast when that perk was meta. His dream snares made him a bit better in chase, but they essentially just made him a reskin of clown. These snares could be set up ahead of time, but they would make no difference unless the survivors were asleep, in addition to chases with him just feeling boring. While Freddy was undoubtedly better than before, it didn't change people's general feeling that he was a boring killer to face. And I won't even talk about his add-ons, which could create even longer games before they were nerfed. Gameplay-wise, this rework is fine. Yeah, he's still boring, but at least you can actually win games as him, and obviously everyone is going to have a different definition of boring. It addresses the problems with him and makes him stronger through the changes. It's okay. My problem with these changes is something way more fundamental to Freddy's overall design changes. While he may be stronger, he is very much lacking from an aesthetic standpoint. In an attempt to make Freddy a stronger killer, they essentially replaced him with a cardboard cutout version of Freddy. Release Freddy, in all his weakness, still gave all players in the match an immersive experience because it genuinely felt like you were playing as and against Freddy Krueger. The experience of only appearing to survivors when asleep allowed you to feel like you were in control of the match, even if that feeling was more see-through than a clean window. Now, instead of Freddy being invisible and survivors only seeing him when you start falling asleep, he just walks around like an average Joe and phases in and out of reality like Sadako or Spirit. 
This idea does kind of work if you consider the idea of microsleep that the movie talks about, but it really doesn't feel like it makes sense. If that were the case, you'd be fading in and out of the dream world too. And so instead of just seeing Freddy vanish every once in a while. Now he just feels like a random guy in a sweater chasing you down to ask about your car's extended warranty. The rework takes away a core part of Freddy's power that could have worked if it had been buffed properly and replaces it with a generic put shit at loop killer formula that we've seen so many times. And Freddy's not even good at it. When looking at the killer roster, there's almost no reason to pick Freddy over killers who do the same things but better, like Clown or Knight. Changing a killer drastically to make them better isn't necessarily a bad idea at all, but it's very important to keep the essence of the character intact. One of my favorite reworks we've ever gotten over the years has been Doctor. When Doctor was reworked, I was very worried because I liked Doctor. Fortunately for me, Doctor's changes ended up being quite good. They took what made his gameplay unique and made it flow better in-game, allowing the killer to be easier to pick up and less annoying to the opposing survivors. He still has the same power, roughly, but it was changed to feel more modern and dynamic. Freddy doesn't have that. Imagine if Freddy would have been given something to do to catch survivors in the dream world that wasn't incredibly stale and overdone. For example, he has a brown add-on that allows you to switch from dream snares to dream pallets, which are just fake pallets that when you throw them down don't do anything. It's arguably the weakest thing in the game, but it's 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 fine. We're, we're not going to think about that. But why stop there? The dream world is Freddy's domain, and he's supposed to manipulate it and control it however he chooses. So I think behavior should have run with that. Give Freddy the ability to make fake generators that survivors can work on for a little to waste their time or something. Give Freddy the ability to make fake windows to slow down survivors or maybe even change entire loops. You can do anything with Freddy's power, and it irks me that they chose the most boring thing to go with just to make him a little bit stronger. Freddy could have been absolutely amazing. He came at a killer that was so fun and so unique, and what they ended up doing was creating probably the most generic killer in the game, and it definitely doesn't have to be that way. He isn't a Skull Merchant case, where no matter what you do with his power, he'll probably end up being boring. His power isn't limited to just one thing. Let the creativity flow, behavior, come on. I know they have it in them, I've heard whispers about Freddy being considered for a rework, so we'll see what ends up happening. If that does come around, I really hope Freddy can be turned into a killer that's fun, exciting, and above all else, a way to honor the horror icon he is. Uh, but when that happens, can we replace gross Redditor Freddy with a cool one? You know, get Robert England on there, have him voice the character? That'd be great behavior, thank you.